I'm Scott Al Miller. It's the 18th of November, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Latin America, and today we are still here in Cochabamba, Bolivia. This morning, Alan and Anna arrived from uh, from Panama. They flew into uh, into Santa Cruz de la Sierra, which is the same uh, that I did, except I was coming in from Costa Rica and Peru. They came in a different flight path through Panama. They are there. Right now, as I'm doing this recording, hanging out with uh, Melanie, the same that I did when I was there in Santa Cruz several days ago, uh, and they're going to be coming here into town later today. So I'm doing this update as that is happening during the day, and uh, I'll be filling you in on uh, our adventures here and more stuff going on here in Cochabamba as I explore the city uh, and get a chance to get out and record some for you and have some changes in where I'm going to be staying. So we'll get to all that right after the bump. I'm going to start the day with just a little bit of housekeeping. I'm doing a little bit of recording up here on the balcony because it's nice, it's pretty, um, but I have devices charging and some things, so I didn't want to uh, go out and start walking and recording. I'm about to go do that uh, for you guys for some additional footage, but I, I, I'm stuck up here, but I wanted to get some of the details done. So I have had an Airbnb here on the fifth floor uh, on Parque Fidel Anse, except that's that way. So this is looking the other direction. This is the south view from the apartment. I'm on the fifth floor five uh, unit five two for anyone in the future who's looking this one is available on airbnb and i'm very happy with it it was twenty dollars a night this room sold out for tomorrow night for the 19th uh so i'm not able to stay here obviously so uh, i booked another room and i was looking in the area and i actually found another room in this building i'm really happy with this building it's the exact same unit but on the other side third floor first unit uh, supposedly with city skyline view. So uh, we'll have one way or another, we'll have a different view off the balcony and a different setup of the same space. So I'll film that Airbnb room for you as well uh, when I get there, uh, which will be tomorrow. Um, and so that's unfortunate that I have to move for one night, but it's really cool that I get to move in the same building. I get to go down, drop off the keys at the front desk, just got to lunch with Ozzy and Alan and Anna tomorrow and then get the keys and go right into the same place. So that's going to be super easy. Um, and if I needed to maneuver them, I'm sure everyone would accommodate me moving directly from one to another, but I don't need that. So I'm not going to ask them to do that. Uh, but so that's going on here. Then we're flying out uh, in two days to La Paz. I still need to book that flight actually. And I need to book my Airbnbs up there. So it's part of my, I'm feeling a little bit frantic. I've actually been far busier here in Bolivia than you would expect. I I'm getting up pretty early in the morning, which is about seven o'clock here. So it's about five o'clock my normal time because uh, it's two hours time difference. And I start working right away and I go all morning working as much as I can. Um, I'm filming what little bit I'm actually struggling to film for you guys um, going out spending a lot of time working with the team while I'm here, which is why I'm here. I'm here to work. This isn't a travel vacation trip for me. I would love to and I'm really excited about what time I do get. But it, it is a struggle to get um, to get my regular work done because it's not just that I have regular work; it's that we're in a very busy mode at the office, and so and I keep pulling the team thing into places, so so they're getting busy as well. Um, and by the time I'm getting home from dinner and like doing stuff, I'm actually barely like I'm, I'm doing uploads during the night and that's been working great um, and, and getting time to edit is like impossible. I can't believe that I'm going from seven o'clock in the morning until midnight day after day with. I feel like no breaks at no point am I actually like, oh, I've got some downtime to just relax. It hasn't happened at all and I can't quite figure out where the time's going. Uh, so that's been a little bit difficult. And now Alan and Anna are here. I'll see them in about 10 to 12 hours. So I have a little bit of time, but of course they're, we're gonna go out to dinner tonight and we gotta show them around a little bit. And then tomorrow uh, is their one day to see Cochabamba. So we're gonna be trying to show them some stuff. It's just, it's really busy. So uh, that's what it's been like for me, but I'm going to go get some batteries charged, change some things up, and I'm gonna get out and do some recording of Co Cochabamba while I can, because this is another absolutely gorgeous day. The sun has just been fantastic. It is nice and crisp. It doesn't feel cold, but it feels very refreshing. I'm really enjoying uh, this trip up here. So let's get out there and explore Cochabamba. I've been out walking today for a few hours doing videos for you guys that you've seen in the last day or two, but behind me is the Avenido Liberator Simon Bolivar 
um, Avenue. And on this side is the Coliseum or the Stadium uh, Eva Morales. And in front of it, you might be able to see there's like a t very brightly colored tent village of artisans set up. So today has been a very big walking day for me. Um, I've really acclimated. I think I'm able to just walk more or less normally when I when I have to run, I'll be like, oh, nope, I notice I'm a little bit out of air. But in general, uh, the 8,000 feet is not affecting me too badly. I've been feeling really good in general. I am drinking coca tea and taking the medicine as you're supposed to when you're here. So following all the locals instructions and the doctor's orders, those kinds of things. And I have been taking it easy, but feeling good and um, at this point, when I'm doing this recording, uh, I'm actually about an hour away from needing to leave to go pick up Alan and Anna, who are arriving uh, here in Cochabamba. So I'm going to walk up Simon Boulevard, get a little bit of that for you guys, and then I'm going to cut across back to the Parque uh, Fidel Anse, where I'm staying, uh, and head out to the airport from there, uh, probably with the camera hooked up and uploading, so I won't be getting a lot of footage from that tonight, but that is what's going on right now during the day. So I'm going to be heading straight north this way, up Simon Boulevard. All right, this is where we come up to the Coliseum and there's this amazing, huge outdoor shopping village. It's like a flea market, but they're all set up in these really colorful tents and, and sell just about everything here. I was amazed by just, I mean, how big it was for sure, but also the unbelievable range of things. It wasn't like uh, for tourists at all. Like this is definitely uh, meant for people who live in Cochabamba to go shopping there for things that they need. And some of it is artisan goods, like handcrafts and that type of stuff but a lot of it are imported goods or manufactured goods from around the country uh there are some like big businesses representing there some government offices like you could go get information or something there's a lot of florists like you could see like like nurseries bringing their goods um pet care all kinds of things like this was really surprising as a way and it's so formal it looks like a, a you know in in america this would be like a, a fair that was set up um, that was a very special occasion, but as far as I can tell, this is just where people do this type of shopping. There's a lot of honey there. Um, it, so it kind of is like a flea market, kind of like a farmer's market. A whole bunch of things mixed together here, um, right in the middle of the city. And then there was even, like, furniture. And some of these decorations, like those decor we just went past, very high-end. That is a lot of shopping they have out here at the stadium. So this is the Coliseum. It's a lot of it's inside the gate. So I looked away here and then realized that the gate or the wall, the fence that I'm walking by, that's all furniture stores in there, like quite a large selection. So you can walk down the street, glance in, see if there's anything you're interested in before uh, before going in. The whole thing was very interesting and not at all what I was expecting to find in uh, <laughs> on this walk. That is about the end of the shopping area, but that was huge. I cannot believe how big that is. And this is all on Simon Boulevard, and that is the stadium. That is the wall of the stadium that all this is, is backed up against. So you can see that the fence was open there a little bit. So then I continued north on this. So this is basically an extension of the Prado, but where it heads into Calacala, which is one of the, you can see it on the sign there. We're heading towards uh, America, Avenida America, which is one of the big east-west roads. Uh, but Calacala and Caru Caru are kind of the two best known, most desirable barrios in the city, just north of downtown, with Calacala being a little bit on the west, and then it butts up against Caru Caru on the east. Caru Caru is where I have been staying. That is where Fidel Anse Park is. So if you're looking at a map or anything, that's where that is. And then directly west of it is Calacala, which is where we are now. So they're very similar, but I would say Calacala is definitely uh, a little bit less developed, a little bit uh, a little bit more industrial. Not really industrial, but it has like the stadium and, and more businesses. And Caru Caru is a little bit more parks and residential from what I can see. All right, we turned off of Simon Boulevard. We're now heading east on... I believe this is America.
sacar la cámara. That is an auto pollo. That is drive through chicken. What a cool part of the city this is. Another circle here and more fruit. Give me a hard one to cross. I'm not sure where it's best, but there's a sidewalk straight across. So I think this is kind of where it's intended to be, but there's a lot of traffic. Ah, there is a light. I'll hope for the best. There's no no crossing information for me, that's great. Okay. Oh. Well, that's easy. These circle parks are really cool. There's a very large fountain that is not on. And that is a really nice looking apartment building right there. Continuing east some more. It's quite a ways back to my place, actually. I'm kind of exhausted. <laughs> and I'm racing to get back in time to get Alan from the airport. And not to get run over. Hello, puppies. Cool-looking Mexican place over there, I think. Might be a furniture store. It's really hard to tell. <laughs> it's... Nice balconies on that apartment. Having had Ozzy driving me around the city the last several days, Nearly every place I go, 
looks familiar. Ooh, I like that bed. Is that DJ's? This is a very small mall. We actually came here last night. I had no idea that that's where I was right now. So now I know exactly where we were. That is a kind of a normal upscale mall, very small. But you go up to the third floor and there are uh, restaurants, like regular, a little bit better than an average food court, but very food courty. But then you go up to the fourth floor and it's all upscale bars and clubs done very fancy much like what we saw in guatemala city it's very nice so we went there and hung out i also have to mention cinnabon which you never see outside the u.s anywhere i've ever been is huge here and they have them all over and i was talking to ozzy about it he said yeah we never really liked cinnamon and then cinnabon showed up and he said there's something about the american cinnamon i'm like oh that's interesting so i did a quick look up on it and it turns out that americans don't tend to use true cinnamon in things we use uh, casilla and so it's actually that they're used to true cinnamon here which apparently they don't like as much so the Americans ship in cassia from the United States or wherever we get it from and then they're all excited about Cinnabon which I mean I get it Cinnabon's good but <laughs> it's funny This is a church here. point out that's a rental scooter I haven't seen much of that but I've heard that electric scooters and electric bikes do exist here okay this is photo Z Okay, I've seen a few of these. Among the weirdest things in all of Bolivia is that this is the pizza place they get from the U.S. Sparrow? Are you kidding? Airport and gas station pizza is their idea of real American pizza. It is so weird. There's Tuesdays again, or Tuesday. And still on Avenida America. Heading east, how, how appropriate that on America is a sparrow. This is another cocoa latte. So that's at least four, I think, that we've seen. I absolutely love how the light here is, like these giant windows with indirect light. This is fantastic. I was recording uh, one of the, the future voiceovers here and and I watched the video and I'm like, that looks better than my regular videos. So it tells me how much I need an office like this where I can just set up and have this kind of window and light in general. Plus you can see the city out there. How cool is that? So I need a La Paz office, obviously. Um, but I wanted to uh, do a quick announcement. I want to show the um, more of a segue, I want to show the apartment that I had in Cochabamba. This is the one in La Paz. I'm recording this just a little bit in the future uh, as I go back into this, but I want to do a walkthrough of the apartment itself and the shared space that I had for both the last apartment and this second apartment. Coming up in the future, I'll do a walkthrough of this apartment for you as well. Absolutely, that's coming, uh, but 
let's uh, let's show this one in Cochabamba now, and that'll be every place that I was in Cochabamba. Testing. I want to do a quick walk around of the upstairs area at the apartment that I rented from Airbnb uh, this past week, and it's the same one that I'm renting uh, in my second time. So I just wanted to take you on a quick tour because this is absolutely gorgeous and a reason to use these Airbnbs. This is where the elevators come up right here. There is a dining room. We're going to go in there in a minute. But look at this. This is north facing. I have a hot tub up here. It's not in use right now. We've got these great gardens. And then the views this way, not too special. But as we come around this way, let me just give you an idea of what it looks like up here. And then we're going to head over. This is a great space to be working from, let me tell you. So uh, that big white building right there, that is the, the Mormon temple. Uh, my buddy Ozzy lives right up there on the hill. There is a national park up there. This down there is Fidel Anse Park. That's the area I've done a lot of the walking in. You'll recognize this apartment building over there. This is so nice, although I find it a very strange use of the space. See more of the city. So that's looking west. These mountains are intense, very high mountains. Remember, the bottom of the city is 8,000 feet. So when you're looking up at those mountains, they are very, very high. But these are some fantastic views. I'm really glad that we're over here. Now this is the communal barbecue room. It's, it feels like kind of like your office, except that's a barbecue grill right there. Like that's pretty nice. They got a fridge, like you could host little tiny parties up here. It's pretty cool. She's actually cleaning while I'm doing this. Buenos dias otra vez. Lo siento. And then here, I have another garden space out here. That's where we came up in the stairs right there. And then I'm gonna point out that is the, uh, the, the Christ on the mountain. Uh, and you can just see there's a teleferico that goes down the side of the mountain. I can actually see that from my balcony, but it's too far away for the camera to pick up. I don't have like my mirrorless with me. And then here's the south view of the city. Gives you a feeling of just how big and dense this city is. And then that area down there, let's see if I can, that is the lake. You can see, see there, it's, the drought is causing it, the, the lake bed is dried up. So it's all dust rising off the lake, but that is, that is where the lake should be. And that's kind of a cool new area. That is a reservoir. It's a artificially created lake, but it's a major feature of the city. So that is the upper floor here at the Airbnb I had this week and the Airbnb I'm about to move into. We will give a tour of the new apartment itself right after this. Okay, we're outside on the balcony of my new apartment for the day. This is an Airbnb and it is in the same building. You'll see we have basically the same view, but we're a little bit lower here on the third floor instead of the fifth. But this is unit one instead of unit two. We were in five two, we're now in three one. This one has curtains or drapes that the other one did not have. So we're gonna come in and explore this one Show you a little bit different design here in Cochabamba, Bolivia. But notice a couple major differences. One, there are windows on this side because this is a side unit. And there's this beautiful dividing wall. And honestly, I think this makes it much better. Even though it's a very small space, I think dividing it like this is an improvement. Really makes this a living room. I like this couch a little bit better. There's less workspace here. That's important. There's more seating, more useful seating for eating. Uh, and that sort of thing, but it is, and it's got a bigger fridge. The bathroom is just slightly different. We have, the main difference is the shower is reversed and there is a window in here. So we're gonna back out. We're gonna show you the apartment again, but this time with the windows open because we have a lot more light in this one than we did in the other one, plus a lot more airflow. The other one only had 
this balcony door to let air in, which is fine. It lets quite a bit in, but it doesn't let for airflow to come through. This one has three windows on the side plus that, so all kinds of air. And like magic, we're now wide open. So let's back up and take a look. Look how bright this is. This is five o'clock. This is a quarter after five in the evening. And this is how bright and open and airy this is. Now, I really like these types of uh, shades that they have. They have these slats on them. And so as you adjust them, they can go from blocking basically all the light to half the light, or you can open them up like this so that they're completely open. And this becomes just bright. And there's so much air in here. You can, you can see everything waving around. It is so cool and fresh. This is fantastic. So uh, I'm liking this already quite a bit more than the other apartment. I was really happy with the other one. This one is a bit more, right? That one is $20 a night. I believe this one is 28, which doesn't sound like a lot of money. And of course, if you're staying for one night, splurge, right? But for if you're a backpacker or something, $8 could be basically the price of an entire night somewhere. Uh, so. That could be a lot. And when you're talking about $20 to $28, that is a big percentage increase. So this is, you know, statistically, it's a lot more expensive uh, of a unit. But in, in raw numbers, if you're coming from North America, spending $20 or $28 on an Airbnb is a relatively minimal difference. And if you're getting something you like a lot more and can get a lot more use out of like this, it's going to make it a lot easier to sleep, I think this could be well worth it. Plus this wall is just great. All right, after all that hiking, it was time for Ozzy to come pick me up and we headed out to the airport to pick up Alan and Anna. Um, they came in at about, it was supposed to be like just after five, but it was much closer to six. They're a little bit delayed, not bad, right? And, and if we absolutely had to, we could drive down and get them, but that would be awful. Uh, they came in, we wanted a, a pretty simple evening. They are just hitting the altitude and you don't want to go out and do too much. It's only 8,000 feet. It's Cochabamba. So like you can do things, but you do want to take it easy just in case altitude hits you a little bit, which it didn't really hit them, but they were a little bit on the sleepy side. Uh, so we drove around just a little bit. Uh, we went up and looked at Ozzy's house because he's got amazing views of the city. I have some of those uh, pictures on my Flickr feed. And uh, so they got to see the layout of the city, get a little bit of introduction. You know, we drove around a little bit so they could see what the city was like. And even by that point, once they're up at, at Osvaldo's house and seeing the views, they were like, this is amazing. We love this city. Like they were truly enamored with uh, with Cochabamba within the first 30 minutes just driving around. Of course, there's a lot they knew they didn't know, but they were really interested in learning more and exploring the city uh, just in that first little bit. But it's a, uh, a pretty, pretty exhausting day. They've been flying all night. They hadn't slept, right? Same as I did. Got into Santa Cruz, spent the day touring around Santa Cruz with Melanie and her husband. So did all that, just getting more and more tired. And then did the flight, and their flight was delayed, and now we're driving around Cochabamba. So they're excited to be in Cochabamba, but their energy levels are just tanking really quickly. So we went out to Burger House uh, for dinner, which is a hamburger place. Um, uh, both Alan and Anna eat a lot of hamburgers. They're really into that. So checking out the Cochabamba hamburger scene uh, is important. <laughs> so, and easy, right? Quick and easy. We didn't have to like decide on dinner or find a place. So went there and Ozzy and I were planning on going on somewhere else to eat because he's uh, currently vegetarian, just a, on a diet thing. And I'm always vegetarian, uh, but they turned out that they had veggie burgers at Burger House. So we just gave that a try and ate there. Uh, and then pretty much right after that, just took them back and let them go to, got them into their apartment uh, and let them get off to bed because uh, it, it, it makes for a very exhausting day. And then I returned uh, to my apartment and went and uh, uh, did video updates and, and editing and all of that kind of stuff. So I've been doing as best as I can to stay uh, rested and hydrated and trying to keep up with the videos for you guys. And I'm really happy with how well that has been working. Like it's, I'm definitely losing ground, but the whole like getting ahead uh, and the way I'm editing and everything is working out great. And the internet in Cochabamba has been good enough that I'm able to keep everything uploaded and that's just been working fantastic. So I'm very happy with the whole process and uh, living with just one camera has been limiting, but it makes me able to move around much more, more lightly and agilely. And so it's been, it's been very good. So 
If you'd like to su uh, support the channel, you know, absolutely, that's so helpful to me to make all this possible. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And of course, it helps a lot if you just like and subscribe, watch an extra video after this one. Um, we've got more, a uh, little bit more Coach Obama coming up, including a really long, I think tomorrow, maybe in two days, really long walk, I think in two days, a really long walk of the um, uh, Cyclovia, which is the pedestrian way through the middle of the city. That one I think is going to be really cool. Um, and and I'm going to be heading off to La Paz here in just a couple days with Alan and Anna, and uh, we'll be getting all this same kind of stuff from La Paz as well, give you an idea of what that city is like. So take a moment and watch one of my older videos. All of that really tells YouTube how much you love the channel um, and, and makes them tell more people about the channel, right? It's, it's really important. And of course, if you post on social media, post this on Facebook, on Reddit, stuff like that, that gets the word out and people discover it that way as well. Tell your friends and family. And as always, I will see all of you tomorrow.